Welcome to the Motormouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we do full-length car reviews each and every week. And halfway through, we stop for a segment called Questions, Coffee, and Cars. We've spun it off, and it stands alone now, along with those. Mm -hmm. And we're up to number 73. How do you get a question in? Follow along on Instagram at Motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday morning, I put a post out asking for questions. Once we gather our questions, the post is deleted, and we start the show. Time now for Questions, Coffee, and Cars. Your questions from Instagram. Have you heard anything from Mazda getting a truck or an MPV minivan back into their lineup? My family personally had a manual transmission B2000 with a bench seat, and it was the best small truck. Well, yeah. it was basically a Ford Ranger, uh, and that was when Ford and Mazda had an ownership. Um, they were called Ford owned part of Mazda, so yeah. that was easy for them to use the Ford products. Uh, I think that the world has gone firmly towards crossovers and SUVs. Yeah, I mean, it would be great to see them come up with a pickup truck, something like the size of the Maverick. I think it would really do well in the Mazda lineup, but no word from the brand and whether they're going to bring something like that out. What are your thoughts on the news that GM and other automakers are sending info about customers' driving habits to insurance companies without their knowledge and its implications? If a car brand is turning me into the product, that's enough for me to not consider buying it. Well, you know what? I remember when um, I was I watched uh, the Business Channel, CNBC in the morning, and they were talking about Tesla. It's not really a car manufacturer. Mm -hmm. It's a data center, and they're getting all of this information from you, and that's going to be so valuable. Newsflash, it's a car maker. Uh, but this is a big thing that this the connected car is going to be able to send information about you to people who want to buy it and that's going to be insurance companies and you don't know about it like i don't like that at all so there's so many stories on this i happened to pull a new york times story because it was interesting so they interviewed a gentleman by the name of ken Dahl. he's a seattle resident him and his wife drive or they drive a bolt mm -hmm. ev they are leasing it for three years um, so basically he went to insure it in 2022 again and his insurance had gone up 21 percent so he thought oh gosh maybe it's just the insurance company so he shopped around he's able to do that we're not able to do that here in british columbia but they were all the, around the same uh, price. So he asked one of the insurance companies about this, and he said it has to do with the Lexus Nexus report. So, but that's not Lexus car company. No, no, no. It's a, it's a L E X I S. Yes, L E X I S N E X I S. Mm -hmm. It's one word. So Lexus Nexus is a New York based global data broker with a risk solutions division that caters to the auto industry. Industry. So Ken Dahl asked for the report, which he has the right to get under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And he says it was or it is a 258 page report. And he was absolutely shocked by the data they had on him and his wife. So more than 130 pages detailed each time him and his wife had driven the Bolt over the previous six months. It included the dates of 640 trips, their start and end times, the distance driven, and an accounting of any speeding, hard braking, or sharp accelerations. So he gave an example and he says, on a Thursday morning in June, for example, the car had been driven 7.33 miles in 18 minutes. There had been two rapid accelerations and two incidents of hard braking. So what that what that can do is it can it can tell if uh, you're accelerating quickly and the traction control has to come in, or you're braking quickly and the ABS is activated, right? So and the reason why they have that, <clears throat> excuse me, is they had the um, the teen driving app that yeah. you could download. And as parents, you could use the same technology, the connected car, to tell you if your teen had had hard acceleration sure. or emergency braking. Speeding. So it can tell if the traction control had been activated or the ABS had been activated and if the speed was over a certain uh, rate. And well, that was maybe nice for parents to see, but now the oh. insurance company can see it. 
not good. Not good at all. So it also said in this article, which I thought was interesting, in recent years, automakers, including GM, Honda, Kia, and Hyundai, have started offering optional features in their connected car apps to rate people's drivings. Mm -hmm. Probably similar, maybe, to this You team. suck at driving. So yeah. some drivers may not realize that if they turn on these features, mm -hmm. the car companies then give information about how they drive to data brokers like Lexus Nexus. Okay, I just want to say we just got a new car. I know we talk about this, this silly car a lot, but it's just because it's new. Uh, so we and did, about this app in yeah, particular. And so so we, we just got a new GTI. Yeah. And um, when we went to pick up the car, the guy was there who was showing us the car. He really wanted us to sign up for the My VW app, right? Yeah. And I was like, why? Do, I don't want to be a connected car. I don't need to know, you know. Um, and, I, and he says, well, you can see if the doors are locked or unlocked. You can lock them or unlock them and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I don't really. And then I thought, he says, well, we get scored um, higher from the company if we activate this. And I thought, well, I'll do the guy a solid and I'll activate it just because I'll they treated us so well. Yeah. So I did it. But now I'm thinking, I'm like, what did I do that for? No, I, I would get rid of that. I wouldn't have going that on, app. After I'm, reading this. I'm going now, on there now, now Andrea. Volkswagen, I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> Volkswagen was not named in this article, uh, but still, like, this is kind of the future of the connected app. And no, where does all that data go? You know what I would like to know is like you if if you have access I don't know this if you have access to the SIM card in the car somewhere like where is that little SIM card because it's yeah. sending data through 5G or 4G connectivity right so where is the SIM card can you go in somewhere in the car and just take the SIM card out maybe you know it's also a concern like our son is a new driver he's a good driver really good he does driver. not have a connected car he doesn't have a connected car we're going to keep it that way uh but what if he did have a connected car like what if he had a brand new car and he's driving around and then all of a sudden his insurance goes up 21 percent the only thing i would say about the insurance going up 21 percent is we've seen all of these write-offs from electric cars um because of damage mm -hmm. and we're seeing that also is insurance companies are putting up the cost to insure electric cars because so many are getting written off and they're so expensive to repair so it could have been a, a twofer right he got whack, he got whack because his traction control went off <laughs> and he got whack because he's driving an ev who so knows poor ken Dalt, he did ask the insurance company and they said it has to do with lexus nexus could you imagine you'd be like well what's lexus nexus what's this report about and then you get it and it's a 258 page report like that would Andrea, just, I would just, that would just be like, whoa, are you know kidding? They know everything you're doing already. Like, don't kid yourself. This is Yeah, but they're not sending to it you. to my insurance no, company. No, they're not sending your insurance company, but they're sending all of, you're listening. They're listening. Hello, how do you like questions and coffee so far? It'll come up, something about, about questions coffee. and coffee. Yeah, questions, What's coffee. your favorite coffee spot? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't look at, I know some people are bothered by that too, especially with I'm Google. I'm bothered by that. But... Um, they just keep feeding me stuff. Like, even if I watch a video on YouTube about dogs, then I'm fed dogs, dogs, dogs. It's like, enough. I don't want to see this anymore. Hey, guys, I love your content. What would be the best SUV, maybe car, for carrying two golf bags without having to drop the back seats? We have an Audi Q3 and find it too small for carrying all the gear. So it depends if you want to go, you know, lengthwise or um, side to side. Yeah. The, you know what? I don't know. You we gotta don't take, play golf. You got to take your I. golf clubs to the dealer and try it out. That's, That's it. really what you got to do. So if anybody is a golfer, I just want to say, I just want to say, how did the golf bag become the industry standard? It really is. It's the industry standard I for it. for cargo space because we go to all of these events and they go, you can get three golf. <laughs> Like, like what what was what about a what about a goalie bag for hockey no. now that's a real test the other one is how did the olympic size swimming pool it's the size of an <laughs> olympic size swimming pool i know it's you, like these these catchphrases catch on but you are right about golf bags like this is a big deal i've even had viewers saying can you do like a golf bag check zach and i don't own golf clubs Actually, and we don't have bags i, I did have golf clubs and at then, one time yeah, yeah but this is recent because i was cleaning oh. out the garage and i just left them in the back lane 
did they go? They did were somebody gone take in a them? day. Someone took yeah, them. Yeah, we've got this back lane, and you put things out there, and it's it is, just gone. It's the greatest Zach's re decided not to put the it, bottles out there anymore. He wants the It's the greatest recycling program out. ever is the back lane. So I did a little research, and uh, Acura RDX, Volvo XC60, Honda CRV. apparently you can do that. Now, anybody who is a golfer out there, please chime in. This would be very helpful for this other viewer to know which vehicles without folding the rear seat down can fit two golf clubs. So if you could lots, do that. Lots can. You need to go to the dealer with your bag. But yes, that's out. the big thing. It's the same with car seats yeah, and you gotta strollers. You've got to take the car seats. You've got to take it all with you. Are you open to consider endorsing any product or services other than car related in each of your segments? Just thinking um, out loud about it, the on-screen chemistry of both is great. Yeah, Thank well, you. we have an agent. If you want to um, advertise on the channel, <laughs> you can just go to the YouTube page and click about a reboot in yeah. Canada. And then that's Kyle's email. Send him an email and say, we'd like to sponsor the Zork and Drea show. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll consider it. We have some new sponsorship coming up in April, May, and June. It's got nothing yeah. to do with cars. No, we are fussy about what we endorse. I mean, we, we you know, have to like it. Product, I don't yeah. like to endorse things just to take in money. It's just not who we are. So we limit ourselves on endorsements. It's the same with Instagram. I have people constantly... Um, writing about fashion or jewelry that I could wear on Instagram. I just feel like um, I would rather not. I'd rather are focus they, on car stuff are they and trying just to wear get my you, own stuff. Are they trying to get you to do a bikini haul? Yeah, bikinis <laughs> yeah. is another one I get. I'd yeah. be down for that. Workout gear. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is um, we do try to keep it automotive related because we are looking for something that is a service that you might actually be able to use. Like in the fall, we had um, a month-long Toyo tires mm -hmm. giveaway. Now that's something you can actually use. Tires are obviously very important. And then um, if, if it's... If if it's not automotive related, it's got to be like a blue chip kind of brand. Yeah. We're not going to just go and do stuff that people, uh, you know. Well, we just don't want to flood the channel with endorsements and more ads. And, you know, we like to keep it pretty clean. Love the show. Thank you. Looking into a 2019 to 2021 Volvo XC60, but scared of Volvo reliability. What kind of issues do these vehicles have most often? If you want to keep this vehicle for five plus years, would you just avoid a Volvo? Well, you could always get a certified pre-owned and then get an extended warranty or buy an extended warranty. Uh, you know, Volvo's reliability scores are not that great. And I'm always cautioning people about buying Volvos, but then we have other people that have Volvos and they love them. They love them. Uh, so yes, chime in again if you have a 2019, 2020, 2021 XC60. How is it been for you? When you check the reliability scores, Consumer Reports doesn't give any of those models a good reliability score. Uh, in fact, most of them under 57 out of 100 for mm -hmm. reliability. JD Power better. Um, some of the years, uh, 20 and 2021, 73 out of 100. But remember, JD Power tends to skew a little bit higher. If JD Power gives something like an 82 or an 85, That's that is great high. reliability, the right? One, yeah. The one thing about Volvo is they don't change their cars, really. No. I mean, it's the same product that's been out for years. So you would hope, and if you watch this regularly, we talk about cars that have been out for a long time, typically are more reliable. Yeah. So the thing about the XC60 has been around a long time. Mm -hmm. So it should, be, it should be okay, but mm -hmm. I just know. All I can say is my gut says... I'm not a huge fan of older Volvos. You know, I, I feel the same way. And according to Consumer Reports, they also agree with us. So keep that in mind if you continue to move forward with those models. Looking at getting a VW Cross Sport, mm -hmm. which, in your opinion, is better, the older V6 or the new Turbo, which would be more reliable? Well, I think the older V6 is more reliable. That Back to engines that have been around for a long time. The VR6 was introduced in Corrado in the early 90s. The first time I drove it was 92. And it was it evolved into uh, larger displacement. It ended up being a 3.6 liter. And it was in, in the Porsche Cayenne. It was in the Panamera. And it's been in that for many years. Mm -hmm. It sucks gas. But the engine part of it, that's the one that's going to be more reliable. Now, the older models um, of the Atlas 
do not get a great score and many people have had trouble with the Atlas. It doesn't have a great reliability score. I doubt it's score. the V6 engine though. It's something else. I, I doubt else. it's the V6 engine as well. I don't know what the issue was with it, but many people will say I had lots of problems with my Atlas. This newer model, believe it or not, seems to be more reliable. Um, I don't think that it's based on the, on the powertrain at all. I think that um, Volkswagen has really tweaked it and, and maybe when it comes to reliability, they've worked out those issues. But it's a sample size of one year. It and is not a even a year. It came out year. last summer, so it hasn't even been a year. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, one thing we we actually thought the Turbo Four was good in it when we it drove the Atlas, but I do find that the EPA numbers that that you get are not really real world. The thing about a Turbo Four is if you push it then you're gonna use more fuel. And sometimes when you look at the numbers between a V6 and a turbo four, they're not that much different. Mm. And I think that the V6, those EPA numbers are more accurate. That's just my feeling. I agree, because listen, we have a GTI and the engine that's used in the Atlas is a basically a more powerful version mm -hmm. of that same engine. And I'm driving it really easy because I'm breaking it in and it's using more, way more gas than I thought it would. Yeah. For sure. Is it still worth buying a gas car with big engines in this hybrid and electric era? Well, well it depends still if it's popular. collectible, right? Yeah. Like I would suggest that. Um, like a Mustang. Yeah, or like, the V8. Like, like V8 Mustangs and Camaros and all that kind of stuff yeah. will be collectible in the future. Um, yeah, I think some, it depends on the car. I agree. It depends on the car. I think that there are people that really want a V8 or a V6. Here's something interesting. One of our viewers, when he found out that the GX was going to be a V6, moving away from a V8, he went and bought the older model uh, GX V8 because he wants a V8. Um, so there are people like that, but I do believe that hybrids and electrified vehicles in the long run will probably have better resale value than these other vehicles. There's a lot of resistance with the midsize pickups to move towards turbo four-cylinder engines. Toyota's done that with Tacoma. They got rid of the old V6, yep. uh, the three and a half liter. Now they've gone to a turbo four-cylinder. There's resistance to that. Uh, Ford was ahead of the game. They had the EcoBoost four-cylinder in the Ranger, but they've now added, which is interesting, a V6 back into the mix. It is turbocharged, however, and we just um, finished this week driving the new Ridge the, the latest Ridgeline, yep. which has a 3.5 liter V6 in it. So there, there's there's certainly people in the feedback we get, especially in trucks that are still looking for uh, naturally aspirated engines to go the distance, hundreds of thousands of miles. Look at Infiniti with the QX80. They've gone from a V8 now to a V6. It does have more horsepower and torque, an extra 50 horsepower and 120 pound-feet of torque. But some people will miss that V8. Um, we look forward to driving it one day and, you know, checking out the differences. Love your show and blame you for making us want to get a plug-in hybrid. <laughs> we recently had chargers installed in our condo parking in Toronto and would like to get a PHEV SUV small or midsize. Which one would you recommend getting in line for and are putting a deposit down on? It's very handy when you write these questions to give us a budget and a kind yeah. of like, you want a luxury one or do you want a non-luxury one? I think uh, Andrea is always going to go back to the Korean twins. They do such a good so job, good. whether it's the Tucson or the Sportage. Those plugins are great. The Prime. Prime, the Prime is in the non-luxury category, has got the best range, 68 kilometers, 42 miles. It is a terrific vehicle, but... A little more challenging to get in Canada. The U.S. is better. You Outlander. have more inventory. Outlander plug-in hybrid um, is another good one. It's got some great range as well, just under the RAV4 Prime. If you are looking for a luxury brand um, in the compact class, Mercedes-Benz just announced mm. that the GLC plug-in hybrid is coming to North America. If you can wait on that, I don't know what your budget is, but it has amazing range. For the European test cycle, it will be less, the EPA number. What's so the when number? I, I'm dying to know. I don't know the number. What's the number? 81 what? miles. Okay, so I think miles. Miles. What? Miles? 81 miles. 
That's the European cycle. Well, wait a second. They so, don't. No, 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 no. They don't do miles. They do. They do this kilometers. This was the U.S. This was the oh, U.S. I so okay. I, I did. I did change it from eighty-one miles, and um, it is. Where's my notes? Eighty-one miles, hundred and thirty kilometers. That's the European yeah. cycle. Typically, the EPA is about thirty percent less, yeah. give or take a percentage or two. Um, so that will be fifty-seven miles. 91 kilometers. Now we're talking. Wow. Now that's a PHEV. Right? Wow. Isn't that, that good? That ain't going to be cheap, Andrea. That ain't going to be cheap. No, but boy, that will be a big hit for Mercedes Benz. Boy, you, I you kept the best for last, Andrea. That was a nice surprise. Wasn't it? Well done, Mercedes. Yes. Happy about that. Look forward to driving it. See, start saving now. Start saving <laughs> if you can wait. Doesn't sound like you're in a rush. That might be the one for you. All right, we're all done. Andrew, how do you get a question in? Follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea to get your questions in. I post every Sunday morning. Once we gather our questions, the post is deleted and we start the show. Are you sure that's not a typo? It's not a typo. Pretty amazing. Thanks for watching. And if you like what you see, subscribe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.